For updates on spot stories across the globe, Ebi Iyomon joins us. Good morning, Ebi. Uh, good morning, Ayo, and Rufai, and Dr. Abati. It's nice to see you guys today. Morning. And we'll begin the sports segment with... Yeah, we'll begin the sports segment there with um, news from the NFF, which says that they will soon or are set to begin a monthly awards in football. Now, this is set to um, recognize the best players and coaches. It's going to have seven categories. They've not given full insight to how everything is going to plan out, pan out, but they have said that this will only enable revenue to be brought into Nigerian football as all these um, categories will be available for sponsorships like we see in other climbs in the Premier League, in La Liga, the Player of the Month Award or the Player of the Week Award, Man of the Man Watch Award usually gets um, sponsorships or sponsored by companies and hopefully we bring that to Nigeria. We'll be talking about Nigeria having um, becoming a Nigerian sports becoming a business, not just entertainment or competition. And probably this is the line the NFF are going to be towing soon. We will hear from them in the coming weeks on how they plan to have these awards being done. And we also have another news coming from Africa, where the Zambian FA chief has been arrested for um, alleged fraud. This is leading to the AFCON, this alleged that the funds were used to sponsor two of his associates. So four people have been arrested. And the funny thing is that the money is um, talked about amounts to about $21,000. Um, it's exciting how this kind of amounts could be even considered as fraud because we've seen in other climes, even here in Nigeria, it could actually have been swept under the carpet. But it is being scrutinized on how he spent the money, how he was able to divert money meant for flights and all of that to use for his own personal interest. Um, more information on this arrest will come out soon. And away from that, we have a Nigerian boxing coach appealing for support as he battles um, a kidney problem. He is a notable coach in Nigeria with Yucateco. Two of his children have participated in boxing as well. They have told this line. They represented Nigeria at the 2023 um, National Sports Festival, where they also picked up medals. Hopefully, um, help comes this way. We've had a lot of cases upon cases where past athletes, ex-footballers, even coaches suffer ailments without having funds to um, facilitate treatment. Hopefully, um, Mayowa Lassisi gets the much-needed help he needs. And we'll move away from um, the local scene there to the Premier League where Arsenal and Chelsea faced off last night and it was an embarrassment for Chelsea as Arsenal defeated Chelsea at the Emirates by five goals to nil. Kai Havertz was on the score sheet, Leandro Trossard and Ben White all on the score sheet to help Arsenal extend their lead on the Premier League table to 77. Now um, Liverpool will play today. They have a game in hand. City have two games in hand and they will play tomorrow um, against Brighton. But Arsenal are floating, they are, well, they are flying, recovering from the loss against Aston Villa, they've been able to pick up um, subsequent victories in the Premier League to extend their lead on the table. And still in England, the EFL Championship game was played yesterday and we had Ndidi in action and he got on the score sheets. Ndidi was able to um, get the second goal for Leicester City in which they got a 5-0 victory to help them extend their lead on the AFL Championship table. Hopefully they get promotion. They have now have 94 points with four games to be played in the AFL Championship. I mean, it has become more prolific in the league knowing that he has had a better advancement in position. That's in the midfield there. He's not playing as deep as he used to be. He's getting on the score sheet and getting goals for Leicester City. Hopefully they can sustain this momentum and clinch uh, the top spot without having to play um, the playoffs for the Premier League. I mean, Ebi, uh, if you had watched at the start of the season, I knew I was not expecting anything from Chelsea this season. I talked about Pochettino being a wrong coach. I talked about all the fact that all the players they bought were on the par. And yeah. it was reflective yesterday because this was the same Chelsea that threw a Kai Havert away. And Kai Havert was having a good time against them. 
all the Chelsea striker put together are not as good as Kai Havertz's right leg. You know his left leg is his power leg. But they are not as good as Kai Havertz's right leg. Jackson, sixpence none the richer. All of them put together, nothing. So I saw it coming, and that's why you see this season, I've been rooting for Arsenal to go ahead and do the job against Man City because we cannot desecrate the Premiership by having a team win it four times. It will lose the competitive flair. So I'm happy Arsenal were able to get... Uh, I'm a Chelsea fan, maybe don't worry. I know I'm used to it. You know, this is... I've gone past <laughs> the heartache. And, I, and that's yeah. why I'm saying I want Arsenal to go ahead. I'm happy they've increased their goal difference. So I can go ahead and talk. So I'm used to it. There's, there's nothing you're going to tell me about Chelsea this season. I, I'm not expecting anything. As regards no, Rufa, the, I do not I, I, I do not want you to have... Um, okay. As we, I want to, uh, let's talk about... I do not want you to have double heartbreak. <laughs> Okay. No, let's talk about more important matters. Chelsea is less important to me. Uh, as regards okay. the monthly uh, awards, who is going to pick up the sponsorship for it? And what's the accountability behind it? Because we need to ask NFF questions. It's not today they've been doing awards, but we know how it always goes in the end. So who is going to sponsor? Because before you announce an award like that, they should have had prospective sponsors as we speak. All right, well, thank you, Ebi. I'm, I'm glad that you presented that news of Arsenal with a smile. After yesterday, I'm thinking of forgiving you. But let me talk about the um, Football um, <laughs> Association in Zambia and what has been described as a monumental arrest because um, as um, critics or um, analysts have argued this is monumental and shows that no one is above the law. What is against Andrew Kamanga is the fact that some people who are identified as receiving large sums of money and tickets to AFCON were not even, had nothing to do with the federation. We're not staff members. And so it just shows that when it comes to corruption in football, especially as so federations on the African continent, unfortunately, this is something that's quite prevalent. And as we've talked about in other, um, in other areas whereby we have to strengthen our systems and hope that the processes and procedures to maybe um, transferring money or approval of money has to go through that process. So he's been arrested. He'll be fully investigated, probably charged to court, and we'll see what the outcome would be. Hope it's not just a show and then it ends there, but that they will actually be, you know, it'll take its full course and if found guilty, will face the consequences of his action. But again, I'm looking forward to um, the Premier League. I know you've talked about Man City, Liverpool still have games ahead, but Arsenal is fighting for that top spot and hopefully they will um, justify the fight at the end of the, of, of the tournament. Well, what Five Star Arsenal tried to prove yesterday is that uh, they are bid for the title. The Premier League this season remains unassailable. And what they put up was a telling performance against uh, a Chelsea group that even uh, Mauricio Pochettino, the uh, manager of the team, described are so soft. They showed, Chelsea showed a lack of capacity, and that was the problem. I mean, they, they, they considered the four goals within 18 minutes. They came back after the uh, first half. It was mm -hmm. like they were not there. And the question to ask is, why did uh, Chelsea put up such a poor performance? Was it because of the uh, absence of Cole Palmer, who had to uh, step down uh, because of uh, injury? Cole Palmer has been the magical one of uh, Chelsea. They've won their last uh, five games in the Premier League, and all of a sudden, Kupama was not there, and it became an issue. However, Arsenal may be in a good position. They have good, good difference, but uh, Man City still has six games. That also puts pressure on Man City to make sure that they don't drop the ball, you know, in any of their remaining uh, uh, six games, as we say. You know, if you look at the coefficient points, you know, the uh, Premier League is down to the wire. You know, major fight there. But Arsenal, yesterday, mm -hmm. you were not so optimistic about them, you know, but uh, uh, it looks like uh, Ayo has been vindicated, vindicated this morning because she supported her team <laughs> well, doctor, yesterday. Yes. Uh, you, 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 yes, you rightfully um, asked the question about Chelsea not, um, well, 
playing well, probably because of Kopama. But I'll still say that in the last two, three years, the transition in the Chelsea team has been immense. For Chelsea to have a pairing that has the Sassi and Badashili goes to show how, well, how they have retrogressed. Yes, Arsenal did very well. I don't think Chelsea even came to the party at all. Arsenal have extended their lead. Manchester City still has six games and Liverpool have five games. And I would still say that the marathon, when it comes to the Premier League marathon, is like a script, like I said yesterday. I don't think Ch uh, Manchester City, yes, they probably may lose the game against Paws, but I still see them topping. But what it goes to show is that Arsenal have been able to build a good team. In the last two, three seasons, they have been challenging for at, even if not the first position, but at least to stay in the top four. I think they've done very well for themselves. And for the NFF, right. but I wanted to awards, talk about I other think, issues. Um, Rufai, okay. I wanted to talk about okay. other issues. Unai Emery, you know, he has re uh, renewed his contract, his contract with Aston Villa till 2027. And I think, you know, uh, with what he has done with Aston Villa, that is probably, you know, a good place for him. After all, when he took over that team, uh, they were close to relegation. They were 16th on the league. But he has taken that same team uh, to the Europa uh, Conference League, uh, where they are going for the semi-finals now. I think the next uh, team they are facing is uh, Olympiacos of Greece. And then also they are in fourth position. So Una Emery has done very well for that uh, team. Now to talk about uh, NFF, uh, monthly sports awards and all that. Fine, I mean, there's no problem with it. You know, people who do well should be rewarded. But the same NFF should pay attention to issues about allowances, about welfare, you know, and that these awards, this sponsorship they are looking for, should not be an opportunity for NFF uh, op officials to uh, enrich themselves corruptly. There must be transparency, there must be accountability, and there must be proper focus on the larger objectives of promoting football rather than self-interest. Okay, we take a short break now. Thank you very much, A.B.